Be glad in God and rejoice. Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We rejoice in God and thank God in great humility. God is mighty and gracious in forgiveness. We come before our God with thanksgiving. Let us worship God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Of God, O 
born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. With his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long.
trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Gonna trust Him Let us pray. Almighty God, you are a gracious Father, clothed in majesty. You are mighty, yet you save us with mercy. Almighty God, you are an exquisite creator. With hands that carved out beauty, you are author of life, yet you give us such freedom. Almighty God, you know each of us intimately. Your heart is full of love, yet you watch over us in our weaknesses and guide us daily. Prince of Peace, we draw near to you and drink in the promise of eternity. Lord of Peace, we walk with you and seek your guidance as we learn to be more loving. Lord of Peace, in your sanctuary we are safe, safe to let down our guard and dwell in your truth. Risen Lord, you came for the needy, the poor, the oppressed, the forsaken and those that society has forgotten. Risen Lord, your life renews our hearts from within. Thank you that we carry your promise of forgiveness. Risen Lord, we ask of your Spirit to work through us as we minister to the world and share your love with all. Almighty God, Prince of Peace, Risen Lord, we dedicate our lives to you. In Jesus' almighty name we ask and pray. Amen. Let us say the offertory prayer together. God of ages past and present, you are timeless and eternal. May we openly receive your powerful and timeless love. Pour out your blessing on this offering so that people throughout the generations respond to you with a resounding, Thank you, Lord. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning will be taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I bring greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's really a privilege to, it's really a privilege given to me that so early in the year that I have this privilege to at least preach God's word, share God's word to all of you all uh, in living hope. May God's blessings be with you. I would like, like also to say hi to Pastor Chris. I don't know whether we have met before, but may God bless you even as you take this new assignment of being the pastor in charge of this church. I wish that I was there today, but because of uh, circumstances, this is going to be a recorded sermon. And I pray that God will also... Um, God's presence, presence will be with us um, to give us wisdom to understand His word and also the courage to, to obey them. I'm I'm actually speaking, preaching today from a very strange topic. I, I don't think you you hear much uh, sermons given in this passage that I'm given uh, I'm using today, but I felt the Lord impressed in my heart that there, there are certain things that we need to consider, um, even as we live in such a strange time, such a difficult time. For many people, the passage I'm taking, I don't know whether you have read this earlier, but it's taken from uh, Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. Let me read it to you. Um, Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 to 15. One day after Moses had, Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, Why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Median, where he sat down by a well. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. This is a strange topic because whenever we want to speak about heroes in the Bible, men of God, we usually want to speak on a very sanitized uh, version of that person. You know, when, whenever Christian leaders, and there's a big scandal, and there's a big scandal for one of our great Christian leaders, you know, today, right? I think many of us know this know this story uh, in America, not Malaysia, um, we, we get very concerned. Yeah? Moses was a man of God. We know this when we read the Old Testament and also the New Testament. Moses was the great deliverer of the people of Israel. Moses was the, the person who brought, uh, who was the prophet of the Lord. Who, whom God used to bring God's uh, presence, God's knowledge, God's wisdom, God's laws and commandments to the people of Israel. And Moses led the people of Israel from Egypt to just before entering the promised land. Moses indeed was a great person, a man of God. If there's anybody who we can describe as a man of God, it would be Moses. But in the beginning of his public life, we read in this chapter, Moses was a murderer. Yeah, not, not some, um, what do you call it, um, 
mythical, legendary kind of story. It was in reality before Moses even began his uh, his uh, ministry or his public appearances. Moses was a murderer. Terrible! It's terrible. We 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 should never uh, hide these things, but come to to reality of who a person is that all men have sinned and fallen. Uh, uh, fallen. There's no one who is who is sinless, right? And the wages of sin is death. Everybody has fallen fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. Um, so. How do you comprehend this as a Christian? And when you read a passage like this, and that's why I think it's a really strange topic, uh, passage that I'm reading. Uh, how do you comprehend this? You know, when you talk of people, when we are to, to share the gospel as a Christian, does, do we use a sanitize us? Right? Uh, I go and preach the gospel knowing in my heart that I'm not perfect and I'm not sinless as well that um, I have done things which are not good because I'm a human being and I'm, I'm actually uh, in a fallen nature of sin. Yeah. So what credibility do we have as Christians to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people? We can actually use a sanitized way or we can be real. Yeah. So in this message, how do we actually comprehend what Moses did? He was a murderer. This great man of God, a murderer. Now, to understand this, we need to actually, uh, there are three points that I want to bring. Why did he do this? Um, what were the reasons that he came to this decision to actually murder a person? That's the first point. What were the conditions? Why, why did he do this? Secondly, what was the outcome of what he did? What was the outcome of what he did? And thirdly, what did he learn from these lessons? All right. So the same thing for us, you know, when we when we read this, why did he do it? What were the consequences of this? And what did he learn from it? And I hope that this will actually be lessons for us in our lives. All right. Let's go to the first point. Why did Moses murder this person? How did he come to this position where he need he actually killed the person? Yeah. Now for this to happen, we need to understand Moses' history. Yeah. Moses was saved by God as a child. You know, you know that Pharaoh was a terrible person. He committed genocide. He wanted to kill off the whole Israel race because they were getting too big. Uh, and he was afraid of national security. He wanted to preserve um, Israel, uh, Egypt, as pure, right? But he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it because he needed the people of Israel to be labor for for him. Yeah. So he wanted to commit genocide as one. But then after that, he actually decided to actually cut down the number of people of Israel by committing infanticide. Infanticide simply means killing the babies of Israel. Yes, not just any baby. That's how terrible he is. He killed the the male babies of Israel. Yeah, and God miraculously saved Moses. And Moses, um, even though he was supposed to die, he was actually let go into the river. He was rescued by the daughter of Pharaoh, and the, this daughter of Pharaoh um, adopted Moses. So when he adopted Moses, Moses was a Hebrew, but he grew up in an Egyptian court with all the power, with all the education, with all the might of Egypt. So uh, Moses was not just anybody, right? He was, there are two things going for him, right? Number one, he was a person rescued by God. He was a Hebrew. A Hebrew is a person who belongs to God, who, who, who through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God made a covenant with them that they will be his special people. Right? So one thing, Moses was a Hebrew, 
But secondly, Moses was the adopted grandson of Pharaoh with all the wealth, all the education, power and position of the Egyptian royal court. Yeah. Now, how do you grow up like that? Right? Uh, now, you must also remember that Mo Moses knew he was a Hebrew because growing up, it was his mother. In chapter 1, you read, this is such a beautiful passage, right? Book of Exodus is really marvelous. That it was his mother who actually raised him. Um, because Pharaoh's granddaughter, uh, uh, Pharaoh's daughter asked him, uh, asked her to look after um, Moses, until Moses was big, uh, as a child. And so Moses would definitely have known that he was a Hebrew. Yeah. In fact, Moses is a uh, Hebrew name as well. Um, so he knew he was a Hebrew. But he also knew he was he had the power of the Egypt, Egyptian royal court. And how did this affect Moses? To understand this, and sometimes you don't find it in this passage in Exodus chapter two. We we don't realize uh, the the inner turmoil or inner um, anxieties that he would have had. The power of Egypt belonging to to the Hebrews. The oppressor. Egyptians, the oppressed, the people of Hebrew, the Hebrew people. Yeah. To understand this in scripture, we need to actually read scripture to understand scripture. That's actually a big, very important biblical principle. Scripture explains scripture. And you find in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24, Hebrews 11, verse 24, it says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to say, I am a Egyptian, the grandson of Pharaoh. Why? Why did he do that? Verse 25 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. That's the first one, right? He didn't want to be uh, identified with people who lived, uh, whose description of life was, they lived in the fleeting pleasures of sin. That's the first thing. Then verse 26, it goes, later, he, he regarded this grace for the sake of Christ has greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Okay, of course, this is the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is talking about faith in Jesus Christ. Moses didn't know Jesus Christ at that time, but Moses knew God. And he says, right, to live in the ways of Egypt is a disgrace to the ways of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. So there's, there's no calms about Moses and his, in his identity. The oppressor, the Egyptian, and the oppressed. Moses chose to be the oppressed rather than the oppressor. Right? Not, not really easy for him to do. He didn't need to do this. But the, the thing about the Hebrew people, is that their faith in God was strong. Though they were oppressed, they were mistreated as slave, slaves, there was never ever uh, a time of up uprising, you know. They never fought back against Egypt. And it's seen in the book of Exodus again and again and again. When they were oppressed, the first person they have always went back to was God. They were actually very, very religious people. Amazing. This was 400 years from Joseph's time, you know. It's not like 10 years ago they, they from, from Israel came to Egypt. This is 400 years. They always identify themselves to the ways of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to live in holiness. And anything that the Egyptian did for them was fleeting um, pleasures of sin, sinful pleasures, right? And it's disgraceful to live that way. And Moses lived that way. I have two words that I want to teach you here, Hebrew words, uh, on the first point again, right? Why he did what he did, 
Why did he murder? Two words. The first word was Yatza. Y A T Z A. Y A T Z A. Yatza means I come out. Yeah. So in verse eleven of chapter two, go back to Exodus. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were. Yeah. Yatza is a coming out from from the Jewish courts, royal court, to his people. Yeah, you know the book of Exodus also. Um, Exodus actually means Yatza. You know, is that the people of Israel Yatza Egypt to the wilderness or to to the promised land? They came out of Egypt, right? Yeah, and the reason why, as I said, the book of Hebrews says this now, that Moses decided himself that I'm not going to belong to the Egyptian court, though I'm I'm seen as an Egyptian prince, but I Yatza. I've come out of it, and I want to be with my people. Okay, so that's the first word, Yatza. The second Hebrew word here is uh, Yara, Y A R A, and it's seen here. It, the Yara means watch them. Okay, so again, I read you verse chapter two, verse eleven. One day after Moses had grown up, he walked, went out to where his own people were, and watched them at their hard labor. Watch, watch, see. The word uh, in Hebrew means yara. Now, this is not just I, I see you. I, you know, I open my eyes and I see. Yara means seeing with emotion. Okay, um, seeing and it actually affects you as a person. Your emotion. Yeah. So imagine the oppressor going to the oppressed, seeing the Egyptian mistreating the people of Israel, it actually affected him. Ayara. Okay. No. So it's not just not just the first one in Hebrews, it says that they were living, the Egyptians were living in fleeting pleasures of sin. That means they were enjoying themselves. They were they were they were sin, sinful people. They were sinning against God. It's not just that, you know. Uh, it's also on the other side, there are people who are suffering and being mistreated by the Egyptians. And he watched with emotion. Two qualities of Moses that every Christian should have. I, I don't mean go and kill someone, but these are two basic, basic things, right? That firstly, our love for God supersedes everything. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength and nothing of this world should take our love away, our love from God away. We should never give our love of God to the love of the world. Right? And that's Yatsa. We need to come out from the world because the world takes our allegiance our love for God. Right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, there's love of God, Yatza, but then when you, when you leave the world, you open your eyes to people and you see people with emotion. Yara. And there's the second great com commandment, right? that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That it breaks your heart when you see your fellow human being suffering. Yara. So that's where it began, Moses' life in, in the public. He had a position of Israel, out of Egypt. He said, no, I don't want that. And he went to his Israel, the, the Hebrews, and he felt for them. Yeah? So why did he commit murder was because of the turmoil in his own inner being. I wonder, wonder whether um, we, we have that kind of description of Christians today. Can we describe Christians that way, my dear brothers and sisters? Can we describe ourselves that way? That 
we do not want to identify by the things of this world because we love God. But more than just that, our hearts are broken by what's happening to fellow human beings, not just Christians, but human beings in the world today. You know, right? You know, during, during MCO, uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, what had happened is that um, two things have happened and really warms my heart. Firstly, the whole desire to meet together to worship the Lord. And we have done a lot of things um, to worship the Lord. The church goes on. Uh, church at home, church in the families, to the families, um, online service. Now in your church, there are 20 people meeting together, hoping to come together. We say that, that the Christian um, fellowship, the koinonia, the, an ecclesia, the church of God goes on, right? And we, we strive to keep the church going. Um, because we do not want to follow the ways of the world and just uh, moan and groan and just live as though there's no tomorrow, right? So there's this uh, yatza, there's a coming out of the ways of the world. But there's also a yara within the church the last eight, nine months we have seen in the, the efforts to help the, the marginalized, the poor, People who have lost their jobs, um, the migrant workers. We we know of uh, the M MRCD within the Malaysia, uh, the Methodist Church, the Malaysian MCRD, the Malaysian Crisis Relief um, Group, that actually goes out and gives aid and relief to to people who need it. Um, and there are a lot of of really people who actually need it. Uh, need aid, right? I, I remember that time, uh, President Jayakuma, but now Bishop Jayakuma, um, he himself was so involved in the getting of uh, vegetables to be sent to people doing MCO, to the people who could not get vegetables, right? Uh, he was calling here and calling there, and getting uh, help of the MCRD people. Um, getting help of the farmers and, and coordinating all this. Bishop Jayakumar was doing all these things at that time with, under the track church, right? Um, there's this Yara uh, that was going on and it's really, really heartwarming uh, to see that Christians who are Yatsa out of the ways of the world, that we desire to actually worship the Lord in all circumstances and there's this Yara the breaking of hearts about people, right? So this is the beginning for Moses as well. He had that heart, right? But but then we go on to the second point. If you have that heart for God and for God's people, why then did he murder people? Yeah, right? Now you read carefully in verse 12, verse 11, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. This is when you make yourself the standard of morality. It's, it's strange, you know, that he left Egyptian courts because of morality. Right? He saw the people of Israel and the conditions they're going on, and he felt of them. It was morally wrong what they were doing, what they were going through, right? And when he saw the Egyptian beating or mistreating the Hebrew person, he said to himself, now, what the Egyptians were doing is wrong. What the Hebrews were going through was terrible. And I, being the person of power, of means, I am going to do something about it. Because this is what I think morally is right. And that's the danger of all Christians. And that's the danger of you and me, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. When we decide for ourselves 
what salvation should be. Right? And the, the thing that he didn't have from here is that uh, he, he didn't allow God to be God at this time. He, maybe, maybe it was stories of his mother, how he was saved. He was saved for a reason and, and you are the chosen person and you are the person. Actually, he could. He had all the powers, all the influences of Egypt. He had a heart for Israel and he could do all these things. And, and in terms of this is that he's just protecting his fellow, uh, fellow family member, a Hebrew because he belongs to the Hebrew people. And I can do this because it's right. They were actually being mistreated. And we know what he did was wrong. Why? Because he killed an Egyptian person. He killed a person. The Sixth Commandment, God will tell him later on, right? 40 years later, God will tell him the Sixth Commandment, thou shalt not murder. He didn't say thou shalt not murder uh, just the Hebrew, the people of Israel. It was a blanket Ten Commandments that thou shalt not murder. Full stop. It was wrong. Right? But at, at that time, right, he decided for himself what is the standard of morality based on what he had gone through. And it was never based on faith. Right? It was never based on faith in God. It was based on my standards. And that's why I think why God impressed me to actually preach this message. My dear brothers and in Christ, at this moment of time, you know, and I said this now about the church, uh, Yatsa, we're coming out of the ways of the world, and Yara, sometimes you have to be very, very careful because we could be doing all these things based on our own strength our own wisdom and not in faith in God. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I, I'm actually in a time of meditation now. Actually, if you all know my situation, what I've done is that I actually left the Matthew Church in Malaysia. I, I need to actually be very careful because some people have asked me, you know, have you left the church? Uh, I've not left uh, the Methodist Church. I'm still a member of the Methodist Church in Banting, my hometown. I've left employment uh, with the Methodist Church in Malaysia. Why? Because after 22 years of my uh, my life, 22 years in full-time Christian ministry, I decided that I actually need a time of uh, of retreating, of pulling back, to hear from God and to seek God again uh, on the direction that He wants me to go through. Many people say it's a crazy thing to do um, on two reasons. And many people scolded me, right? Uh, had long discussions with uh, both the bishops, Bishop Ong, Bishop Jehuma, um, and so many people were, I had discussions about these things, right? There, there was actually two two objections to what, what's happening. Why, why what I'm doing today, what I did when I attended my resignation on the 1st of December, I left officially on the 31st of December 2020. Uh, there were two objections. Number one is that uh, it's a crazy time to leave my job. Yeah, the church, uh, I'm thankful by God's grace, He actually has given me um, a good position within the Methodist Church in Malaysia. This is one of the highest positions that, that I would never have dreamt to be. Uh, and, and employment with any organization at this time is actually very important because to leave at this time, um, it's, it's crazy because many people cannot get jobs. That's the first objection. In fact, my own, own parents, uh, my brothers and sister also struggled with me. Uh, but this is a long story, a story for another time, to actually how I made the decision. But the second thing that was, was going against me was the ministry that I was doing. Yeah, I worked for the young people, the youth in the Methodist Church in Malaysia, but more than just that, I also worked with the indigenous people, the youth ministry, especially of, of Sabah and Sarawak. Um, and also the indigenous people, the ministries that we're doing. And if I leave this, then who's going to do all this work? Right? These ministries they're going through. This was actually told to me there was a crazy thing to do. What you're doing. What I realized in my life 
while I was doing this for the past 10 years with the Methodist Church, 11 years, actually close to 11 years, is that I've come to a position where I'm doing a lot of work and I'm getting paid by God, by the church. God paid it through the church to me. Uh, and I'm doing all these things. And, and it's, it's great I was doing all these things. But it's so, so come to a point in time that after 11 years in Methodist Church and 22 years in the Christian ministry, um, what was lacking in me was faith in God. Professionally, I can do what I was doing. Professionally. Right? Professionally. And I'm good at what I do. Professionally. To the point in time, right? I, I'm, I may not be wrong, yeah? Uh, what I'm doing is right. But I need to check myself. Am I trying to be God to people? Rather, am I just living as a servant of God, watching, hearing the Lord, and being a servant of the Lord in doing what I need to do? God directs me, and I trust in Him. Right? And that's why I needed to retreat. Yeah, and for the six months, next six months, I'm actually and I'm fine at this moment of time, you know. I really do not know whether I'm going to get a job after six months. And where am I going to get my salary for the next six months? I don't know all these things. But I do know that it was the Lord who let me out. As much as the Lord let me in the church, um, Methodist Church HQ, I, I really sincerely believe that the Lord let me out of the church as well. And the reason why he did that was that I need the rest. Number one, there's a main reason I need a rest after 22 years. But secondly, I think I really need to rethink about faith again. That was I working as a professional Christian worker? Or was I living, working through faith in Jesus Christ? As, the, as my shepherd and as my Lord who was directing me on how I am to live my life. Because in many times in the professional Michael William within Matthew Church in Malaysia, I do things my own way. Because I think that is right. And that's exactly what Moses did. And that's sometimes the danger for all of us, my dear brothers in Christ. Even as you live uh, as Christian, many of you have lived Christian for many, many years now. Do we live based on our strength and our wisdom? To a point there, we become the salvation for people. Because we think that's the only way rather than what God is doing in our lives today. It can go very wrong, you know, my dear brothers in Christ. Moses, it went very wrong. To the point of time, he, he decided, right, the only way to save my fellow Hebrew is to get rid of this Egyptian mistreating my Hebrew fellow Hebrew people. And so he solved that. He, he murdered that person. Nobody, I mean, nobody saw it. But then after that, he realized the problem was not about oppression by another person only. It was not just about the Egyptians oppressing the, the Hebrews. The Hebrews were fighting among themselves as well. And how? What is he going to kill another Hebrew? He can't do that because the, the premise of why he killed the Egyptian was that Egyptian was not a Hebrew. But what happens if the Hebrews are fighting among the Hebrews themselves? Yeah. Could he solve that problem? And he realized, right, that what he did was not going to solve the problem. But more than that, what, what he did was murder and that it was actually very, very dangerous. There was, he was in a very precarious way that he had to run away. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how are we living our lives today as Christians? We have two things that we actually go, uh, is going for us, and we praise God for that. The yatsa, the living of this world, of the ways of the world. Uh, we are not worthy because we love our Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And there's the yara, because we love our neighbors as ourselves. 
But the bigger and more important question is, in our love for God and love for others, do we know that salvation can only come from God and not from us? Salvation in the MCO period of time can only come from God and not from us. And what I mean by that, my dear brothers in Christ, are we listening to God? Are we waiting for God for wisdom? Are we being stirred in our hearts on what is right and what is wrong? Or, or are we just jumping the gun and doing what we think is right and what is wrong? Now for this to happen, right, at this moment of time, we need a lot of meditation, we need a lot of prayer, we need a lot of sharing of our lives with each other. We need to hear God together. We need to fellowship one another. It's not just about church having church service online or prayer meetings online or having web webinars and all those things. It's more than that, my dear brothers in Christ. Are we actually fellowshipping with each other? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 verse says, right? Do not neglect the meeting of one each other, even as you see, see the day appearing. Let's not stop meeting together. Why? Because only through that can we actually learn to hear together what God is saying or to see together what God is doing to live in this time of the pandemic, of COVID-19 pandemic. That's the second thing. Right? Why did he do it? Because it's not wrong, you know. Why he did it was his passion. The Yatsa and the Yara. But what he did was wrong. Because he, he decided for himself that I am going to do what needs to be done because I decide what is morally, morally right. The third one, what lesson did Moses learn? You know, because of what Moses did, he had to leave Egypt for the next 40 years. That he needed to learn that you know, Moses was not just leaving the Egyptian court. You know. God needed to take Egypt out of him, totally out of him, that he had to leave Egypt altogether to become a shepherd in the wilderness for 40 years, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. That God needed to take Egypt totally out of him. There was nothing that was left of him. Egypt had, had uh, rejected him. His own people had rejected him. And that was God's way of actually helping him to come to faith in God. We need to learn this lesson of, of faith, my dear brothers in Christ. That we need to learn that we need to get out of Egypt. You know, it's not just about situations. But the whole worldly way, worldly way of thinking, we need to actually get out of it. And we need to actually also get out of our securities to come to a point where we feel that we are nobodies in this world. Only by having faith in God, that God somehow will use us for the salvation of people, the people that we see with emotion. And I pray that, that you may be encouraged to, to, by this word, it's a strange topic, but something that we need to consider, my dear brothers in Christ. Right? Number one, what we have is a, is a gift from God, the Yatsa and the Yara. But put it together, how we need to actually have uh, to live with the Yatsa and the Yara is to live it through faith in Jesus Christ. Right? To come out of the world, to see people in emotion, and to live in obedience to God's leading by faith. And this comes through active communion with God, active fellowship with one another, the sharing of our lives, 
the encouragement to, to hold firm to the word of God, the encouragement to another person and tell that person, you know, God seems to be saying these things to you. Let me pray for you. Let me intercede for each other. Let's work together for the for for for, for the kingdom of God. All these things, Christian fellowship, right? It's actually people living in faith. Yeah, to protect ourselves from being the only standard of morality. Right? We need to learn. The only way to learn this is actually to become nobodies in this world. That we need to actually take out Egypt totally from us. Not just the Egyptian courts. Egypt needs to leave us. Not just the worldly ways. The whole world. We need to come out from the whole world. And then, right, after 40 years, we find God using Moses mightily. And God will use you mightily as well. May God bless all of you all. I'm sorry, it's a little bit long, 40 minutes. But I pray that God will bless you and give you instructions even as you live in this time, this strange, strange time. Amen. I want to give the benediction before we dismiss ourselves today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh.